Here we are this morning on a windy Lake Berryessa. It is February 17th, I think. Pretty sure it's the 17th. There's Mike down there in the boat with the dogs. It's easier for me to launch somebody else and then walk the dogs down. Show the average angler. Good morning, folks. It is Friday morning. Uh, just been editing all the video footage from yesterday. We had over 20 hours with the multiple cameras and just filming nonstop. So it was kind of a pain in the butt. Anyway, we did fairly well. Uh, we learned a lot. Uh, stick around throughout the whole video because otherwise you're going to miss some key points of what we found. I think it's really going to help you because I think today... If I was to go back, I could go out and catch a lot more fish than what I did yesterday. And that's because I figured out something's missing. Uh, and I think it's it's not new. It's been going on, and that's why the bite's been so tough. Anyway, uh, we caught, I don't know. I thought it was seven, but when I went back looking through the, the footage, there was actually quite a few more than that. It was probably closer to ten fish throughout the day. Uh, Mike did catch one. Uh, I couldn't find the clips, as I'm sure you understand. In over 20 hours of footage, uh, I couldn't find all the fish catches anyway. Uh, but as, as the day went on, uh, we started to realize no spotted bass. No spotted bass at Berryessa in February. Underspin, underspin, swim bait. Nice chunky little buck bass. Sadie wants to give him a kiss. Smack Sadie in the face. So all I can figure is because we were catching them in December on underspins where there was bait and we're just not seeing a lot of bait right now. It's uh, down deep, I'm assuming. Uh, I have not been fishing in the Narrows. We launched at uh, over there near Capel. Not at Capel, but in, in there. Uh, anyway, uh, we worked our way through the middle section of the lake, ran up north, went back into Puda. Just, we could still see the bridge. We weren't that far back in there. Um, and we fished around that area for a while. We came back out and we caught fish pretty much everywhere we went. What we didn't do until the end is catch multiple fish in one spot. Uh, so it was almost like, bam, hit one and move, but we didn't do that. Uh, we didn't realize it until a little later on. And then, like I said, at the end of the day, the last spot we fished, uh, we probably caught five fish there uh, and really had more opportunities uh, and just didn't capitalize. Uh, yeah, we got us another one. The 
key bait for the day. First of all, let me let me tell you what we started with. We started with reaction. I was throwing the swim bait. I was throwing a chatter bait. Throwing the LB500. Mike was throwing a crank bait, and Mike was throwing a rip bait. Uh, nothing, no action at all. Uh, and it wasn't for lack of not seeing fish. Uh, the spot we started on, we saw tons of fish, but they just didn't want nothing to do with us. They could have been crappie, could have been catfish, could be carp, who knows. The arches weren't really big enough for me to think they were carp, but you never know when you don't catch them. Uh, we tried the drop shot. Uh, we got no love on the drop shot. Uh, it's the jig, folks. The jig was the ticket once again. Uh, but this time, I think all but, well, let me back up. I caught one on an underspin. Uh, the bites, I would say, through most of the day were fairly random. Uh, different types of stuff. Uh, different baits, not moving the bait, moving the bait. Uh, the largemouth, every largemouth I caught, they all bit with it not moving. Now the smallmouth, well, we finally got us another one. It's a good one, too. It's a good one. And he choked that jig. It's gone. It'd be gone. Oh! Better be careful with that pal rod. Oh, he's been eating fucking crawdads too. He's got some red lips there. See the red lips? See the jig? Yeah, he ate that one. Watch out, Sadie. Let me get those new pliers I bought. Alright. Don't let me get the pliers. God, whoever showed me that trick was a freaking genius. It's you. Is it me? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't go that far. Somebody showed it to me. Nice fish there. Yeah, nice. Nice large mouth. Yeah. His yeah. mouth is all tore up. He's fucking. He's rooting for crawling. These are. They got a spring up. And, and you're still moving it? No, well, I'm moving it, but I'm catching it a lot, you know. Stop it. No. Well, that's my fourth fish, and I think one of them actually bit when I was moving it. And that was that smallmouth that I freaking jumped off right at the boat. All the rest of them seem to be fucking eating it like... When I'm letting it sink, and then when I go to pick it up, they're on it. I have the GYB up, so I'll put the GYB up again, because whether it's right or wrong, he bit it. Chunky little buck bass. Sadie wants to give him a kiss. 
smack Sadie in the face with it. Sadie's into that kind of shit. Yep, we got us another one. You could almost like entice them, like shake it, pop it, but just small pops. Not like you're moving it, just kind of making it, you know, like a head jolt type of thing. Yeah, that's pretty good, huh? Uh, the number one color was the 330 Yamamoto 5 inch. Uh, another color that I would recommend is the Mode Grass. Okay, those are the two colors. The 330 is my confidence bait. Uh, I threw some other stuff for a little while and I, I just had to go back to it because it, it's a confidence thing. And I was having a hard time slowing down with another color. So I went back to that. Anyway, so let me get back to the thing on the spotted bass because this is key for you tournament guys going out this weekend. And you can fish it however you want, but I'm just going to share what I saw. And, and what I did, because a lot of the places I went were places where I normally catch big spotted bass, you know, three plus pound spotted bass. And with the spotted bass not in the mix, it would really change up the places I went to, okay? I'm gonna key more on the smallmouth because they're the ones willing to cooperate. Uh, the red clay banks, the red clay banks, with not so much rock. They really wanted the red clay. And Mike pointed out in one of the fish catches, if you look at the belly of one of the smallmouth, it had mudna scales, okay? The fish will lay down in the mud and they're just really not real active. Uh, but when we got around and keyed on those spots and you kind of worked the bait, you could get those fish to bite. Uh, that that was a key thing okay we didn't figure it out till late um it wasn't through lack of trying but you know that's why you practice as the day goes on you start to put pieces of the puzzle together and pretty soon you're going oh wow we didn't catch one spotted bass where the hell are the spotted bass so you got to think about what's going on and then realize that hey man i need to rethink how i'm fishing I need to rethink the spots I'm hitting and, and key on that stuff where you think there's going to be largemouth and smallmouth. And honestly, they're together. Okay? The largemouth all came kind of like on edges, like, like off the side of the point. Uh, and the smallmouth, uh, I did catch a couple on a point. Um, but most of it was more on deeper flats uh, with some rock mixed in. Uh, you know, you get up to a rock and you just kind of lightly pop, 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 not really trying to move the bait too much. And, uh, man, some of them, they really had me out of position. And I missed a few because of that. You'll see a couple swings and misses. Uh, just, I was out of position uh, working the bait and trying to get them to bite and they just bite. It's almost like they're watching you and they go bite now because you can't set very far. But uh, anyway, line did seem to matter yesterday. Um, it hadn't been that way for me, but it was fluorocarbon. Um, I think all but, all but one of the fish came on fluorocarbon. Uh, just little key points that I'm noticing. And, and you know, I, I threw a, a brush hog, which is normally really good there. You know, a, a, a baby brush hog on a, on a shaky head or even a dart head. Normally that's just catches fish, you know. Um, it, it wasn't catching fish. I never got bit on it. Um, didn't get bit on an echo rig for Christ's sake. You know, we got on a flat where I caught the nice large mouth at and it was, I call it a flap, and I mean it was 22 feet where we caught that fish. And uh, there was other fish around. We were marking fish, so I thought, well, throw the Neko rig down there. I can really, you know, work that bait and, and get bit on it. Nah, it just didn't work out for me. Uh, I don't know, maybe they, 
maybe needed to throw a, just a wacky Senko on steeper banks. I, I don't really know because I didn't fish any of the narrows. Uh, and maybe I'm missing out there. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. Uh, anyway, that's my report. Thanks for watching, guys. And, and to the guy who came up to me at the ramp and recognized me and said, hi, hey, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I failed to get your name. I'm sorry. My wife called. Uh, and, a, and another buddy called all at the same freaking time and, and I was trying to get out of out of the water uh, and deal with the dog. So anyway, uh, thanks for uh, watching. We'll see you on the next one. Tight lines.